<laughs> What's up guys, Jordan from Bennett's Customs. We're back on another episode. If you, uh, if you caught last week's episode, you may have seen us um, sort of prep and get everything ready for the Roadster for the motor, um, which was very exciting. We're working on parts for my Roadster today. And I've mentioned that I've kind of hindsight, hindsight can be a, can be a bitch sometimes, but I, um, when I had that 32 frame up in the jig and uh, everyone told me to remove that rear cross member, which I did to do a bit of repairs. And then we hot riveted it back into place. Um, before doing that, I should have thought about whether or not I was gonna run a quick change. Now things have changed. The table has turned and I'm planning on running a Pacific quick change. So in order to do that, there's gotta be a few things that need to be done. One of those things is the rear leaf spring. Obviously the 32 spring uh, is not gonna cut it with the size of the quick, the, of the sort of gear set that hangs off the center of the back of the diff. I really like the look of a Model A T spring. It just has these amazing curves. They're very sort of, I don't know, I'd say an elegant looking leaf spring if, if someone's ever said that before, but they are, they're beautiful. These are a narrower leaf spring. So these are two, two inches wide whereas a Model A one is two and a quarter inches wide. If you are thinking about wanting to run it inside of a Model A cross member, Model A cross member is gonna be wider. So when the, this piece goes in, we would need to make sure that the, it has an upper and lower plate ma basically made from Model A springs. We are gonna remove a couple of springs as well. Um, this one's quite cool too. I've never sort of seen this, this wrapped one um, must be kind of like an overload spring. You wanna take, remove a couple out, whatever you think. Um, and then when you go and put it in, you basically just have to have all the weight that you're gonna have within the car and test it out. If it's too soft, add a spring. If it's too stiff, remove a spring. So what we get to do is, yeah, basically get this all removed, start removing a few springs and, um, and we'll kind of come up with a bit of a game plan. And then we gotta start doing some wire wheel, rust treat, get everything prepped. Let's get into it. All right, first things first. <laughs> first things first is, these are very dangerous. A um, Couple ways that you could go about this. We could stick it in the vise, slowly remove the vise, letting off the pressure. You could use some G clamps on it, but there's a lot of tension under these. So I wanna make sure you're using your proper PPE um, and, uh, and you know being very safe standing away from the stud himself. So we are gonna just use a pair of G clamps on here that we can then slowly remove and back off. exact same size, that would work. 
All right, so we have them all cleaned, radius them off a little bit. There was just a few that looked a little bit oblong. The lower one that was dead straight um, along the bottom there, I just kind of trimmed that, tried to match the rest of them. So hopefully they kind of all match a little bit. And then this one, we will leave the little wrap on the end because I do want to run these shackles again, which will be good. Um, so I have sort of the six leaf springs that I believe I'm going to run or at least, you know, trial. And uh, we need to add another one because of the, um, the way that I was explaining with the cross member. So you can see that that is the top of a Model T spring and the Model A one, you can see that quarter of an inch difference. So I need to make that up in order for it to, to sit where it needs to and kind of locate. I have my little bottle jack bender over here. And um, this thing has been amazing. I've actually like, as far as like a real cheap, this came from Princess Auto in Canada. I used to work there, love that place. But uh, yeah, I've built like a lot of cages and stuff for four wheel drive and bumpers out of this. If you know how to like kind of set them up properly so they don't actually kink and they, they more or less sort of bend, they're, um, they're a wicked little machine. Obviously not as good as like a JD squared or a pull through style um, bender, but this thing for, for little stuff works well. And uh, lately all I've been using it for is basically tweaking leaf springs. So I've made this little cup. I just TIG welded a tiny little piece of actually a bit of flat bar and just radius the edge so there's no harsh edges contacting anything. That sits on the top of the bottle jack. And what I'm going to do is you can see that these have obviously two different curvatures. So I need to try and match the Model T one. So I'm just going to put it in and just a couple little tweaks here and there on both sides. You make sure you kind of want to do it even. If you were to be doing this properly, well, we might as well do it properly. So what I usually do is I'll mark out um, a few lines and you kind of, you want to try to avoid any area around the hole where your pin comes through that kind of keeps them all together because there's obviously a stress point between here. So if you go and try and tweak that, you know, you could easily just put a crack in that. So that's roughly center. And then what I would usually do is just run a mark every, you know, you could do every inch if you want. Um, and it's only going to need a little bit. So if we were going to be running a little bit more, we could be doing the same. And this way you can just kind of count how many pumps you can do if you want it to be even. And then all I do is just run a speed square along it, making sure that they're going to be even. And all, all this is doing is giving you a guide. Um, this is just giving you a guide, a bit of reference on where to uh, put it together. So, four pumps. So the dies that I have in here as well, they are just the stock ones that have the radius um, in them for holding pipe. So if I was to make this thing full-time, actually, well, it is basically, I only really use it for leaf springs now. I'll, um, I'll turn some on the lathe so that they're dead flat. So it's just basically two slugs. Um, and that way that just keeps the, the leaf spring from kind of wanting to tweak it all. And then if we hold this up, you can see how quickly you can manipulate the spring. And uh, as long as you're just going, you don't want to go too extreme by any means. If you're not comfortable putting a, a leaf spring in um, one of these benders to do this, take it to a spring shop, get them to recenter it, do what they want to it. So I'm just going to do a little bit more here. And I, it really has like not a lot of pressure at all, to be honest. This thing's a little bit tweaked actually. I wonder if two, three, four, That was the third one. One, two, three, four. Release it, pull it out. And you, only, you don't want to go, again, don't want to go crazy with it, just baby steps. So now we're starting to get somewhere. Still, still needs a little bit there. Oh, now I got one.
You want to try to avoid any area around the hole where your pin comes through that kind of keeps them all together because there's obviously a stress point between here. So if you go and try and tweak that, you know, you could easily just put a crack in that. What's that? It just snapped where I told it where it would. I got too close to the eye. So, two rules. One, I don't have my eye protection on. Three, Joss distracted me because he brought food and drinks to us. So I blame him. Just two, kidding, I don't blame him. Two rules. One, yeah, it's not a true. Rule. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's a story. Fact is, Josh walked in with coffees. I don't have my eye protection on. I did say stay away from the hole. I got a little bit close because there was a massive flat spot in here and it snapped. So you can see it. There's a big crack right across there. So that goes in the bin. We grab our other piece. This is why I don't throw stuff out. Josh and Ben both call me hoarders. And then they also go, oh wow, where'd you pull that from? So there's another one. And that one actually has a really nice radius. I kind of have a feeling this one was tweaked or I did something. No, I think this was one for the race car that we pulled out because it had a weird little shape to it. Anyways, wear your eye protection. Where the, right there. I had them because I was speaking and I got, got excited. And then Josh f***ing distracted me. Coffee. Josh. Beauty. Food guy. Beauty. I like your Carhartt colors you got on today. Uh, yellow and green should never be seen. <laughs> <laughs> yellow and green should never be seen. I've never heard that. It's quite funny. Mustard. This is mustard. Oh, shout out to Margaret River Coffee. P.S. That is, that's the, um, that's, that's our, our main brew. Big shout out to the boys over there. Coffee heads. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> So I did a few more tweaks. I wanted it to, um, to fit the profile really nicely, which it does now. So I don't necessarily need it to be this long. I just need to be able to catch the U-bolts that come through. So if I even went a little bit shorter, I think this one was, yeah, if I did, a, if I did five inches, I think that was enough. Yeah, let's do five and a half, just cause. So on our center, we're gonna roll this out. This is where a seamstress tape would come in here. And then this can, well, I can just do an inch and a half off the end. This one doesn't necessarily need to be radius either because you won't actually see it but I will just kind of round the edges off a little bit just so there's no sharp edges. So now I can trim this, trim that, and we'll wire wheel, clean this up, and then we can kind of set the pack up and see what it's gonna look like. Then we need to press these sleeves out so I can run a 35 to 40 rear shackle setup. So that's what I'm, I'm running. <gasps>
I just have a bit of stano rod in here and that's just to try and locate the spring so I can get our clamps in and we're gonna try and compress this. Then we can pull it off and then that way we can put our bolt through and, um, and clamp this down. And it's just temporary. Um, we just have a 7 16 bolt that we're gonna use and uh, be able to put that through. Um, and then what we need to do is press these sleeves out. Um, and then once those sleeves are out, then that allocates a, a spot where we can put our new shackle bolt through. And then I would like to actually reuse these as well. So I'm gonna try and clean these out, um, punch uh, the rivet that's out of there. You can actually utilize them again and have them up and then throw a pin through there, even if we just use a nut and bolt style. But at least it just kind of keeps the whole spring together. I pick up a guitar Too much on your plate when you need to escape. Every little thing will be better when I find a way. Find a way. What the Lord. Find a All right, so as you can see, we got our new shackle studs pressed in, went in with ease. It was, it was awesome. It was really nice to kind of have Ben help me do it, it's just because it's a sort of a, a two-man job, obviously, so it worked out really well. So I think what I will do is I'm gonna make a, a nice set of st um, studs for this. These are just some stainless, I don't even know, a quarter inch by two and a half inch long, probably stainless bolts that I had with some little cap screws. They're just in a bag and they just seem to work. So I'll leave them for now, but I will end up changing these out. But this is sort of, well, I would say done. Um, as far as done enough to then have to, obviously we need to um, modify the rear cross member of the 32 frame um, and fit in the Model A rear setup that uh, will work. Um, and then once that's in, we can attach this to our 36 rear radius rods. And then uh, hopefully we'll have that gorgeous uh, quick change in here. Um, and you know, this is sort of allocating for that space that's in there. So we were able to obviously go through, radius all the edges, kind of, you know, take selected, took out a few. We we're able to um, sort of modify this top Model A one. So now it's got a, it, it's got a nice place to uh, fit into home in our, on our Model A cross member. Um, then we went through, cleaned everything, rust treated it all. It's got that really nice uh, Ranex rust buster that is uh, sort of like an acid that's 50% diluted with water and works really well to sort of uh, coat it as well as um, kill all the rust and sort of neutralize it. And then we were able to get our pins in. So these are the shackles that we'll end up using um, shaft there and then you'd have a nut that would go on like so and we'll have the same stud pattern set up on the rear 36 radius rods and basically job done so when running these inside you can tell that you know the width is obviously going to be a little bit different so that's what we're making up so from that two inch to two and a quarter inch obviously makes a, a really easy job of that and then again, this might not be the exact amount of leaves we're gonna run, or we may have to add one. So again, that's gonna be the trial and error part, especially when we're setting up the final ride height. And again, like, you know, speaking with Brad and he makes, makes a very good point. And it's kind of, it happened with my green roadster as well when I set up the whole suspension. Once you got like a full tank and you're riding around and those springs like settle out, it takes, you know, say four, five, six months. And um, you know, your ride height's a lot different. So. It's, uh, it'll take a little bit to, find, to have final adjustment, but even after that, it'll slowly, you know, sort of change after, after time. So, but uh, yeah, as far as what I need for the, you know, one of the steps to tick off the box in order to run that quick change, uh, I'm very happy that we were able to get it. Massive shout out to, um, 
to the Scotsman Wayne up in in uh, in Fremantle. He uh, he went up in his little parts yard and was able to. He's got a lot of Model T stuff. He really likes using their frame rails. So he had that that nice frame, um, nice leaf spring that you originally saw what we worked with. So as much as it looks real crusty and dirty and rusty, you just clean all that stuff off and you're left with a very nice looking leaf spring. So I'm super happy with that. So now we got our front one done, rear one done. Next is getting that 32 frame up on the chassis table, back in the jig, and then we got to modify that rear cross member. Um, and you know, that's, that's a big one and that will be really nice to tick off the list. So they are evolving. They're, you know, the, both Ben's Roadster and mine, as much as they still like, there's, there's still lots to do on them, but you know, we're ticking boxes, which is really good. So hopefully we'll have both of them on the road sooner than you think. So anyways, make sure you like, subscribe, hit notifications, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that simple little video, and uh, we'll see you next week on Bennett's Customs. <laughs>